Welcome again to the Medical Terminology Podcast. This episode is Chapter 6, Part 3, Types of Immunity. This is something that I think the textbook handles really poorly. I think it is confusing. I think it mixes up terms. And so, using one of my handy maps here, I'm going to try to sort all this out for you. As we've already talked about, there are two major types of immunity. There's the innate immunity, which is the type of immunity that everyone is born with. This is a general immune response that is not targeted to any specific antigens. For example, the inflammatory response. Um, the, some of the phagocytes that are just circulating in the body and will basically eat anything that they regard as unusual or foreign. Then we have the adaptive immunity, which again is more interesting. Uh, it's, it's what we generally think of when we think of immunity. So that's what we're going to focus on. In fact, that's what the textbook is really talking about when it has that little section on types of immunity. Okay, now in the nomenclature I want you to try to use there's two types of adaptive immunity. We have the natural and we have the artificial. And let's be real clear on what the difference between those are. Natural is any kind of immunity that one might acquire without medical intervention. There is no medical technological intervention. It's something that if there were no doctors around, no medicine around, it was just you and nature, let's say, it's the type of immunity that you could uh, adapt to or acquire. Artificial immunity, on the other hand, requires medical intervention. There is something that the medical science would do to you, usually an injection, a shot or something, that would cause you to have some type of adaptive immunity. Okay, so that's the first important point is keep those two straight. The textbook I think really muddles things up. Of the types of natural immunity you have either passive or active. And you'll notice for artificial immunity you also have passive or active. So we need to make really clear what the difference is between passive and active. Passive and active. If we're talking about active immunity, we are talking about a situation where the body has created antibodies. That's the key thing. Antibodies have been created in response to something. Okay? The body's got these antibodies circulating around that are coded to stop a particular antigen. And as soon as that antigen shows up, the antibodies go into action. They tag and, and destroy these antigens so that they never have a chance to cause trouble. You never have a chance to get sick. Okay? And there's two ways that this can happen. The natural way is that you get sick. If you get sick with something, your body will create antibodies. And from that point on, you should not get sick from that particular illness again. Now, we have certain things that are sneaky, like the flu, for example. You can have the flu. You're going to have antibodies to that flu strain that you had. Unfortunately, the flu can mutate. There are lots of different flu viruses out there, and if it's just different enough that your body doesn't recognize it, then it can infect you, you'll get sick. But once you've been sick with that flu, then you're going to have antibodies to it, so that particular flu isn't going to get you again. Okay, This is what we would call natural active immunity. You're getting antibodies, which is the active part, the natural way you get sick. And if you survive being sick, your body is going to have a defense against it. Now, the other way we can develop an active immunity 
And again, active means that we are creating antibodies. That's the key idea. Notice that in both cases, we've got the body creates antibodies. Body creates antibodies. The difference is with the active immunity that is gained artificially, you are being given something to cause your body to create antibodies, and that is the vaccine. The vaccines that you can take, say, for flu or measles or mumps or whatever, has just enough of the DNA makeup of the virus or bacteria or whatever in it that it will trick your body into creating antibodies to it, but you won't get sick because the uh, material you're receiving has been weakened enough or it may just be dead, that it can't really make you sick. But the immune system can recognize it as if you are being invaded, as if you are being infected, and so it will create the antibodies. Okay, so to step back a bit, active immunity means you've got antibodies. You can get those two ways. You can get them artificially, which means you get the vaccine, which tricks your body into creating antibodies or the natural way is that you actually get sick. You have to endure being sick, and then in response to that infection, you will get antibodies. Okay, now let's look at the passive. The passive type of immunity. In the passive type of immunity, antibodies are being passed to you. They are passed to you. They are not being created by your body. Somehow you are getting some antibodies put into your body. Now the natural way this occurs is that when a baby is born it is going to have some residual immunity from the mother. Antibodies are going to be passed from the mother to the baby. So since they're being passed to the baby, it's passive. The baby's not making its own antibodies. It's just borrowing the mother's. And this is going to be very short term. Uh, after a little while, the baby will no longer benefit from these antibodies. Now one way it can be extended is through breastfeeding. If the baby's getting the mother's milk, then it is still getting some antibodies from the mother as long as it's breastfeeding. Now the other type of passive immunity that's achieved through artificial or medical means is if synthetic antibodies are administered post-exposure. And this is something people uh, tend to get confused right here is the difference between this and the artificial active, which is the vaccine. A vaccine is given to you before you have a chance to get sick. Once you've gotten exposed to something, a vaccine is not so likely to help you. Okay? There's certain things that we don't have vaccines for. A classic example here is rabies. There is no preventative rabies vaccine that you can be given. However, if you get exposed to rabies, you have a known exposure, you can be given synthetic antibodies to rabies so that temporarily at least you're going to have this immunity because you've got some antibodies flooded through your blood they're gonna fight the rabies virus and keep you from getting rabies but this is a post exposure shot it's a shot of antibodies that you would get the vaccine is pre-exposure and you're not receiving antibodies what you're receiving is a weakened version of the actual disease that causes your body to create the antibodies that's the difference between active and passive if it's active your body is creating the antibodies if it's passive you're receiving the antibodies as a temporary fix just like over here you're receiving the antibodies from mom but over here your body is creating the antibodies because it's gotten sick so that's the way I would think of it. You have two major classes of adaptive immunity, natural 
artificial. Artificial, there's medical intervention. Natural, there's not. And then under each of those general categories, you've got passive or active. Passive, you're just acquiring temporary antibodies. They'll go away, and then you're not going to be immune anymore. It's just something to carry you through. Active, your body's going to create antibodies, which generally are going to last long term, possibly for your whole life. Okay, so I hope this little chart will clear this up for you. And if you use these terms, uh, I think things will make a lot more sense. Okay, now we're going to do some practice with this. I'm going to give you a description of a type of immunity, and I want you to come up with the proper term. And I'm letting you look at the chart here just to give you a little bit of help, though on your chapter test you're not going to have the chart. Okay, first of all, which type of adaptive immunity would be of short duration? And we've actually got two answers here. I hope you're thinking along the lines of passive immunity. Because if you're being given antibodies basically free of charge from some source, those antibodies are going to wear out and go away rather quickly. So you could have said natural passive immunity, or you could have said artificial passive immunity. Either one of those is of short duration. Now you also could have just said passive immunity. Passive immunity is inherently short duration. Okay, number two. The administration of an immune serum after exposure to rabies. Well, that one's kind of a givey. Give me. Uh, right here we talk about post-exposure. This type of situation where antibodies are given post-exposure is artificial passive. That's what you'd need for an answer, artificial passive. Okay, next one, immunity an infant receives from breastfeeding. Well, that's right here. Antibodies passed from the mother to the baby. That has to be natural passive. Okay, and which type of immunity would be of long duration? Well, certainly in this case, if the body has created its own antibodies against something, that pretty much is going to be lifetime protection. So, certainly we could say natural active. Depending on the quality of the vaccine and the immune reaction, artificial active, it's generally considered long, long acting. So you could have said artificial active, you could have said natural active, and Active immunity is sort of inherently of a long duration, so you could have just said active, because it, it applies to both of these. Okay, here's one that's going to make you think a little bit. People born before 1957 are considered immune to measles and mumps. What type of immunity would we be talking about there? We have to think about this one a little bit. If someone's born before 1957, that would be before the vaccines were available. So in all likelihood, someone born before 1957 actually has had the measles or the mumps. So they would have a natural active immunity. They have most likely had 
the measles or mumps. So their body has created antibodies in response to the infection. So that's how they're immune. Natural, active. Okay, and then here's a contemporary one, at least to the fall of 2009. The H1N1 flu vaccine. What type of immunity is that? Well, we're giving a vaccine, that's right down here. The body will create antibodies to it, so we would have to say that that is artificial active. Artificial active immunity. Now, in addition to this exercise, in the content module, there's a link to a, a very good and somewhat challenging exercise that's similar to this, where you have to look at a picture, identify what is being shown in the picture, and then label it with the appropriate terms. And I highly recommend you do that exercise. That, that will give you a lot of good practice. This ends this episode of the Medical Terminology Podcast.